Greetings, physics enthusiasts. Today, I'm gonna to teach you about something called thin films. Thin films. And it's really a lovely topic. Uh, have you ever blown bubbles uh, with uh, some kind of a soapy liquid? Uh, super fun to do. Uh, if you have a little bubble blower, I, I suggest that you go get some right now and, and blow some bubbles. Uh, but one thing that is wonderful about bubbles is that if you look at them carefully, they're not just clear. There's actually lots of colors on there and, and, and there's stripes of colors that are rainbowy. So there is a rainbowiness on the soap bubble. So check that out. Uh, even if you don't have a bubble blower, maybe you could press pause here and go to uh, to Google and Google uh, soap bubbles and see if you can see that rainbowiness on the bubble. Sometimes when it rains, uh, water flows along on our streets, and sadly, uh, sometimes you know cars will leak some oil onto the street. And if you look at the water on the street after the rain, where there is some oil, you will also notice a similar rainbowiness. And if you're not paying a whole lot of attention, you won't notice it at all. Or you'll say, oh, I see oil. But look at the oil. There's actually lots of colors there and the colors are in stripes. And if you're really paying attention, you'll see that those stripes do occur in rainbow order, red, orange, yellow, green, purple. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Uh, so check that out. And so this thin film that we're talking about, the soap bubble is very thin and we say that's a film. Similarly, the oil sits on top of the water in a very thin layer that we call a film. And so the topic thin films in physics is really rainbowiness created by these thin layers of some kind of soapy water or oily water. So um, so thin films, you know, it sounds kind of fancy, uh, it sounds kind of technical, but what we're really looking for is the source of the rainbowiness. Okay, so there's a few things we need to talk about as prerequisites, uh, things that some I've already taught you about that I'm just gonna review really quickly. One is called path difference. And the idea is if I have a wave that's traveling along and I have another wave that's traveling along and they get to the same place. So if you remember when we talked about sound and I have two trumpet players, you know, and, and so we have two sounds traveling along and then we have an observer here. That's supposed to be a person. Um, if these waves started in sync, they started in phase, crest, trough, crest, trough, crest, trough, crest, then those crests will get to the person at the same time, and they will, we will have constructive interference. If, for some reason, one of the waves started out a little farther away, so it had a crest and then a trough here, and then a crest there, and a trough there, and a crest there, and a trough there, and a crest there, and a trough there, and a trough there then just a second. Then these two waves that we're looking at, well, this one on the bottom had to go farther. And therefore, because it had to go this half wavelength before it reached this one, these two are always out of sync, crest and trough together, trough and crest together, crest and trough, trough and crest, crest and trough, trough and crest. And so they're out of sync because this one had to travel farther. And so that extra distance that it had to travel from here to here is called the path difference. And, it, and so path difference is very important. We use the Greek letter delta, which is like a lowercase d, to represent the path difference. And if the path difference delta is equal to a half of a wavelength, or one and a half wavelengths, one and a half is three halves, or two and a half wavelengths, that's five halves, 
Or seven and a half wavelengths, that's three and a half wavelengths. Um, if it's equal to any, uh, boy, how could I say that? Um, right, any integer plus one half number of wavelengths. That gives me this picture, which is destructive interference, crest and trough, trough and crest, crest and trough, trough and crest. That gives me destructive interference, D-E-S-T-R-U-C-T-I-V-E, -E, destructive interference, which I'm going to call D-I. It's a lot easier to write. If, however, change colors, the path difference is equal to one wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths or four wavelengths and so on, then I have something more like the first picture where they are in phase and therefore I have constructive interference. Some integer times the wavelength. That gives me, I'm not gonna write it out, constructive interference. So if I'm talking about sound waves, constructive interference would correspond to louderness. If I'm talking about light waves, constructive interference would correspond to brighterness. You know how I like to make up words. Um, destructive interference corresponds to quieterness for sound and dimmerness for light. If it drives you crazy when I make up words, you can watch someone else's video. Uh, anyway, um, so brighterness, and loud earnest correspond to constructive interference. Dim earnest or quiet earnest correspond to destructive interference. All right. Uh, so that is review. Now, another thing that is reviewed, so that's review from a long time ago when we very first talked about waves. Another thing that is review from a much more recent talk is that when light is traveling along in one medium with index one and it enters a new medium with index two, we have transmission. So here's our incident ray, here is our transmitted ray. Now, it turns out that when we enter a new medium, what changes? I know, fascinating, we've talked about this. Um, we're gonna have a different speed in my new medium. Light travels at different speeds in different media. And that's what these indices are really about. They are talking about the ratio, any index N is equal to the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, C, three times 10 to the eighth, divided by the speed in our medium. Well, it turns out, hmm, if the speed changes, remember when we talked about this equation, the speed of light is equal to the wavelength of light times the frequency. Speed equals wavelength times frequency. Speed equals lambda f. Hmm. Well, if the speed changes, I wonder if these guys change. And it turns out, I'm going to rewrite this equation, v equals f times lambda. Usually in math, we'll write things like y equals mx, and m is our constant. We usually write the constant first. And it turns out that f, the frequency, is constant. And let's think about why that's true. Let's say we have a wave coming in, crest, 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 crest. The frequency is the number of crests that get to the boundary each second. And a crest reaching the boundary is going to correspond to a crest leaving the boundary. And the frequency entering has to be the same as the frequency leaving. If the frequency entering is large and the frequency leaving is small, that's impossible. That means that we're storing up crests. We don't store crests. And of course, the frequency leaving being more than the frequency entering would mean that somehow there's vibrations exiting that haven't gotten there yet. So the number of crests that get there has to correspond to the number of crests that leave there. The crests entering and leaving the boundary each second must be the same. So frequency is constant. So if my second medium corresponds to a slower velocity, 
then that must also correspond to a smaller wavelength. And if my second medium corresponds to a faster velocity, then that must correspond to a larger wavelength. Isn't that interesting? So let's say um, N2 is greater than N1. That would correspond to this being a slow medium. Large index, we travel slowly. So uh, let's see, we said if we slow down, then that's going to correspond to a smaller wavelength. What might that look like? Let's draw a wave. And then if we slow down, that's going to be a smaller wavelength, not a smaller amplitude. Notice that my amplitude is staying the same, but a smaller wavelength. Here's my original wavelength, lambda 1. Here's my new wavelength, lambda 2. And you can see lambda 2 is definitely small compared to lambda 1. So our light, when we're transmitted, changes velocity. That also means it changes wavelength. And so um, the equation for that, we said N equaled C over V. But C, the speed, is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So my original speed is my original wavelength times my original frequency. I'm not going to write not, though, because remember we said the frequency here and here is the same, so there's just one frequency. And then my second uh, velocity is my new wavelength. My new wavelength over the same frequency. So speed over speed. Speed is wavelength times frequency. Speed is wavelength times frequency. They have the same frequency. So n is equal to, and this is on um, my, I could say, n2 over n1. We often pretend that n1 equals 1, as if we started in a vacuum or in air, where the index is practically 1. And then this n refers to my new index, n2 equals lambda naught over lambda 2. So the ratio of my wavelengths looks like that. My new index into my original wavelength and my final wavelength. All righty. I guess that's it. I was going to try to talk about you know, implications of the equation, but I think we can just use the equation. Uh, Uh, I guess this index in two, if this is one, if this index is one, this index is going to be more than one. So the left side is more than one, which means the right side should be more than one, which means this lambda over this lambda should be more than one. Ah, that's why this got smaller. Uh, I guess that was the mathematical implication of the equation. I'm checking on time. We're doing great. So... If you remember path difference, and if you remember this, there's one more thing I have to show you. When we have reflected light, so a wave comes in and reflects. If in one, in two, when the light reflects. If n2 is greater than n1, if there is a large index here and a small index here, there is a p-cur, p-c-u-r. What is a p-cur? It is a phase change upon reflection. 
What does that mean? It means a crest turns into a trough or a trough turns into a crest. Now, if N2 is less than N1, then there's no P curve. There's no phase change upon reflection. Why do we care? Because if there's a P curve, these two switch. If a crest becomes a trough or if a trough becomes a crest, then it's these half wavelengths give us constructive interference. And these whole wavelength differences would give us destructive interference. Goodness gracious. What does that all mean? I'm going to show you what it all means. Here is a soap bubble. There's air, and then there's this soap bubble. So we've got air, water, and air. Right? The soap bubble is this water thing, and there's air on the inside and air on the outside. And so what happens is light will come in and it will hit the bubble and then it will reflect off the bubble and it will delight the observer. But some of the light is not reflected. Remember, both reflection and transmission can simultaneously occur. So some of the light is not reflected. Some of the light, I'm just going to use um, a different pass. I'm going to keep it purple, but I'm going to have a different thickness. Some of the light is transmitted. Oh my goodness gracious. And then that light will reflect. And then some of that will be transmitted. So there are two rays of light getting to and delighting the observer. Now, yes, some of the light here might reflect and, and go away, and some of this light might be transmitted and go away. But what is delighting the observer is these two rays, the reflected and the transmitted, reflected, transmitted ray. And what we're interested in is the path difference. The path difference is going to um, indicate whether we have constructive or destructive interference. And it turns out that if I call this T the thickness of the bubble, the path difference is essentially 2T. So 2T is equal to delta the path difference. Ah, and if the path, and I want to know, um, and that path difference might be an integer number of wavelengths, and it might be an integer plus one half number of wavelengths. There's two different possibilities. Now, if this is air, n equals about one. If this is water, n equals about 1.3. If this is air, n equals about one. When this reflection happens, is there a phase change upon reflection? Small index to large index. Yes, there is. There's a P curve, P C U R, there. When this reflection happens, 3, 1, is 1 greater than 1.3? No, no P curve there. How about here? For this transmission, is there a phase change upon reflection? Well, it's not reflection at all. So there is a phase change upon reflection. And therefore, an integer number of wavelengths, which usually gives us constructive interference, has now been switched. And the integer number of wavelengths gives us destructive interference. It's this one that gives us constructive interference. Ah, when lambda equals this, I have constructive interference. However, my path difference happens in here when the light is traveling more slowly. And remember, when the light is traveling more slowly, it also has a smaller wavelength. So I have a new wavelength. My new wavelength, lambda two, is equal to lambda, the original wavelength, over n. So I have to have, this is lambda two. So my path difference is equal to n plus one half 
the new wavelength, lambda two, which is lambda over n, which is my original wavelength, the wavelength out here, lambda naught over n, which is this 1.3. That is what will give me constructive interference. So it turns out different wavelengths will have different thicknesses at which they have constructive interference. So something thicker might give constructive interference for red, something a little thinner will give constructive interference for another color, a little thinner constructive interference for another color. And what we see is the light experiencing the constructive interference. So it turns out my soap bubble, notice how I drew it thin and I had it get thicker. So different thicknesses along the way are gonna give me constructive interference for different wavelengths, hence the rainbow. Don't worry, I have practice problems for you to do. And as we do the practice problems and we redraw it, as we redraw it and do our calculations, this will all make more sense. Thin films, rainbowiness. It sure is pretty. Have a wonderful day. Don't break the laws of physics.